Hey guys, it's Matt with Meat Church and welcome back to my outdoor kitchen. Today, let's make some Texas sugar pulled pork. All right guys, well I'm excited about this one. Our new rub, uh, Texas sugar, released in retail this past week. We've been selling it for about a month on our website, but the deal behind this rub, this is what we used in competition on this. So this was the history. So I've been excited to make this video for a long time. Not too many weeks ago, we did a Texas sugar rib video. You guys destroyed that video, loved it. And uh, it's great on ribs as well. And I said in that video, you know, I don't normally come on here and say, hey, use this rub. Obviously, you can take this pulled pork lesson and you can season it with whatever you want. But let's be honest, I'm the CEO and founder of Meat Church and our customers are gonna wanna know how to use this. So that's why I've chosen this today. But we're gonna throw this pulled pork back to kind of a comp-esque method. And this is gonna be a winner. Um, we have done what we're about to show you in what I consider backyard competitions before we got into like KCBS competitions uh, and won people's choice on uh, pulled pork just like this. This is also gonna go back kind of to my childhood. When you said barbecue to me as a kid, this is what it meant. So a little bit about the rub before we jump in. It's a Southwestern flavor profile with multiple different peppers in it. Also some cumin, that's where the Texas name comes from and sugar cause there's a little sugar. However, it's not all that sweet. We've got six rubs that have more sugar in them than this one. It's just a cool name that I wanted to use. It's a sweet heat. It's got a little kick. It is amazing on pork. So let's jump into this. This is a prairie fresh bone-in pork butt that we got at the grocery store. Just a typical commodity butt. Prairie fresh is great. It's got beautiful marbling. It's gonna be really good. Uh, we're not gonna do a whole lot to it, do a little bit of trim, but we're gonna inject this and it's gonna be great. Um, so let's bust out our Montana Knife Company knife. Thanks, Josh, for these. All I'm going to do is trim off any errant fat. This doesn't have a lot, but anywhere something's hanging off, you always want to remove that because it's just going to burn up and any excess fat isn't going to render properly. Uh, so you might as well get rid of it now. Normally, I do like uh, to score the fat cap. This one doesn't have too big a one on the back. There's the money muscle looking really pretty. We go back on the back and uh, this one only has about half coverage on the fat cap. And then if you have a fat cap, I like to cook pork butts fat up. That's not all that important. I will come across and score it. So right across here, why do you do that? There's a couple reasons. Gives you more surface area for rub, but really the most important reason, any thick fat that you have when you cook it, the fat will cinch up. Uh, this will help it lay straight. Actually looks kind of pretty too if you choose to cook fat side up. That's some pretty little diamonds and we'll show you that here as we cook. No need to score uh, the part where there's no fat cap. So you can get more rub in there and like I said it just it just looks pretty. Okay told you we're gonna inject. We haven't done this in a hot minute so I'm excited to do it. I have a pork injection and I never talk about it. This is easy. You can use water, you can use apple juice, Got some 100% HEB apple juice. One cup of liquid to one third cup injection. Instructions are on the package. So why inject, what is it? You certainly don't have to inject. In fact, when you watch my brisket videos, I jokingly say injecting brisket is against my religion, even though I have an injection. We're going to pour all this in this uh, Yeti jug to mix it. I normally have one for video, but apparently my kids took it to school today. So we're going to use my actual bottle. Shake it up. Uh, you can heat this up too on your stove top. If you do that, you got to completely cool it off when you're done. Then I'm going to pour it in something smaller to inject it with. So what's in an injection? It's got phosphates in it that help with moisture retention. This one also has a big pork flavor in it, so it enhances that. You know, I will often say like pork doesn't necessarily need to be injected because there's a lot of intermuscular fat, but this is gonna be crazy juicy and nobody's gonna argue with that. And a lot of people love it. So you choose if you wanna do this or not, this is optional. 
but I inject like in a one by one grid pattern. Just try to, your goal is to get all throughout this meat. So I'm gonna inject that and then we're gonna get to seasoning. She's a squirter. You can kind of see this puffs up as you inject it. Tough to see on the fat cap side, but definitely see it going in. Uh, and I'm wearing an apron. I don't always wear an apron, but I do that when I'm injecting because as you can see, it gets quite messy at times. All right, that's good enough for me. If you've got leftover injection, you can save that for the wrap stage if you want. All right, I'm gonna slather. So I'm gonna put some gloves on, even though I've been touching this, just keep my hands a little, a little more clean. So I'm gonna slather this. I'm pulling out all the tricks today. Um, I love a mustard slather, especially on pork. That's just what I was used to growing up. Uh, sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. Live in Texas now, so Whataburger mustard it is. Slather it on. Now for the star of the show, time for Texas sugar. I'm going heavy with it. You're not gonna hurt this big old piece of meat. We're gonna season, let this adhere for you know, 15, 20 minutes, like I always say on a big cut of meat. It's okay to do this the night before. Come home, do your prep in the evening and cook it the next day. But go heavy with this and trust me, I'm not just saying that because I own Meat Church. Uh, it's the way to go. I'm gonna kind of pat it, just flip over, get messy with it. Again, this is gonna be pulled pork. This doesn't have to be the prettiest thing you've ever cooked. We're just looking for good eating with this. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the edges with this, make sure we got total coverage, and we're gonna let this adhere, so we'll see y'all back here in about 15 minutes and get to cooking this. All right, guys, the pork butt is completely sweat out. You can see it's soaking wet. That's uh, everything in the seasoning pulling the moisture out. So it's good to go and, and ready to put on. So let's talk about how we're gonna cook this. Today, we're running a mill scale 94 gallon offset with post oak, it's just how we do it in Texas. But you could use hickory, you could use pecan. I'm trying to run at 250 degrees. I always talk about temperature. If you wanna go a little lower, 225, that's fine. If you wanna go a little hotter, 275, that's fine as well. Uh, but 250 is what we're running today, so let's get this in. You're going to see we got some others rolling in there right now. So I'm going to change my gloves. I'm going to put some uh, insulated heat gloves on. So cotton string gloves, nitro gloves pulled on top way better than any pit mitts or any BS stuff like that you can buy. Just get these cheap ones and they're way better anyway. So we've been cooking a few of these. So I've got one here that's been going for almost eight hours. I've, uh, I've spritzed it probably four times throughout the cook with cider vinegar. I use my big orange sprayer here and you know, I'll show you how it's, you know, it's a light spritz anytime it's looking dry. Another reason I cook fat side up, uh, it's not gonna dry out. No, the fat doesn't go down the meat or anything like that. But here's your pretty presentation uh, with the diamonds. Now after you wrap it, they could, it could split and it might not look so pretty, but I just dig the way this looks. This is super, super barky as you can see. So we're gonna, we're gonna put it in a pan, we're gonna wrap it. Now in previous videos, you know, I tell you things you can do in here. You can put butter in here. Um, I, I usually definitely put a little more seasoning. People put brown sugar, people put hot sauce, people put pepper jelly. Uh, you can do all sorts of things, whatever your, whatever your heart desires, whatever you want for your flavor profile. But I'm trying to keep this down the middle of the road uh, with this seasoning. Just like in the rib video, I really wanna see what this is all about. So I'm going, I'm going very simple. So half pan, half disposable pan, heavy duty aluminum foil wrapped tight. If you don't like to wrap, that's okay. We have a no wrap pork butt. 
on our YouTube channel, recipeonmeatchurch.com, that you can just let one roll, um, you know, without wrapping it. By the way, I talked about how long it took, but the internal temperature with the instant read thermometer is the deal. I wrap in the mid 170s. Uh, so this was 176, right, as we started the video. So I knew where this one was, so I'm gonna put this back in. That's hot, real hot. And here we've got one. that should be finished. So no more than a couple hours after the wrap, I probe this one as well, I'm cheating. If you're looking for probe tender, it's gotta be at least 195, closer to 200. But what's important is that when you, when you probe it, it's like butter, like right there, like there's no resistance, I'm done. So you wanna be watching that as you cook. Roll this back here, woo, this one popped open pretty good. When the bone starts to protrude, uh, it's gonna split open. But there that one is, and if you look down here, it's all the juice in the pan. That's the benefit of wrapping. You get all of that, um, all that juice kicked out. So my goal here with this pulled pork is to pull it and dredge it through its own juice. You can serve it just like that, and it's amazing. And your friends will be like, that's the best pulled pork I've ever had. That's the secret, or the secret back in that uh, People's Choice competition I talked about. Um, we just ran it through its own, own juices, and it was delicious. All right, let's pull this pork. You know me, I like the money muscles, so I'm gonna come straight down here on the end with some of the best pork in this butt. Whew, look at that. It's coming right apart. Epic bark on here. Love cooking on that mill scale. This thing's barked up beautifully. All right, so just get in here and pull it, and then we're gonna build a sandwich. So clean bone pull. Plenty of smoke in here. I mean, you can just see and hear the amount of juice in this thing, but look at that, look at that deep smoke right there. Plenty of bark. Man, so just come in here and get what you want. I mean, I love the money muscle. I love the bacon underneath. I love uh, the meat around the bone. Just pull whatever you want. So you guys are probably tired of me doing this, like get, get, to, get to tasting. Let's make a sandwich here. Back on the money muscle end. Got to get some of that bark. Hopefully this is the fly's last hurrah as it starts to get colder here. All right, so shout out to my buddy Heath Riles. I want to put a little vinegar sauce on it, so we're hitting it with this tangy vinegar sauce. And I'm just going to pour it straight on. Hope y'all don't mind. I like all kinds of sauces, but on pulled pork, I love me a vinegar sauce. Let's see how we did. I can tell you it's still pretty hot, but I've done dumber things in my life. Damn, that's good. So juicy. Texture sugar is awesome on pork. If you don't agree, I'll give you your money back. Seriously, that's awesome. Uh, sweet heat, so you know when you cook it like this, you're not gonna pick up any heat or anything like that. It's not gonna not gonna burn your kids out. My kids will absolutely love this. Pulled pork is my wife's favorite thing uh, when it comes to barbecue, so I'll be definitely making this this weekend. If you guys like what we're doing, like and subscribe. See you guys next time.